President Trump stops family separation, so does that mean he lied about not having the power to keep families together? Could a Hail Mary resurrect Pima's football program? And why Tucson landed on the list of worst cities to live in? These stories and more next on the 520. We want to welcome you to the 520. I'm Steve Nunez. I'm Marty Mata the Fourth. Thanks for joining us. And if you notice, I'm all in black. I'm in mourning. I'm sad. I'm angry. How can one defend separating children from their parents? Mm -hmm. This is not the America Beautiful. that I know. Of course. And seriously, we're going to start off on this note because it's something we should be talking about, and it's something we should all care about. So I'm going to get started. Thank you, Steve. Let's just come right on out and tell it like it is. It turns out there is absolutely no freaking law that requires the separation of immigrant children from their mothers and fathers at the border. President Trump and his administration flat out lied about it. After claiming family separation was a result of democratic law that could only be changed by congressional action, the president flip-flopped reverse course, and signed an executive order that'll keep families together. Finally, mm -hmm. something right done, but the damage cannot be recovered. Yeah, and the worst part about it is he's forced us to be okay with it. He's forced us to forget about the fact that normal. he lied. He's forced us to forget about the fact that this was all just a giant puppet show for him. And him claiming at first, if you would have given me my wall, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had to do this. He's a, he's a kidnapper claiming his ransom. He's a kidnapper asking for his reward. And that's the worst part about it is now it makes me think that this was just part of his entire agenda the entire time since he came into office in January. It's cruel. It's inhumane. How can one defend seeing innocent little children crying for their parents mm -hmm. and locked behind cages like animals. Mm -hmm. I said it before, if, how is it that we can care about dogs who are at the Pima Animal Care Center locked behind cages mm -hmm. more than we care about these innocent children? That's what it's boiled down to. That's what the debate has become, and it's sad. Okay, so he reversed courses and signed an executive order. Now he's the hero. Okay. <laughs> He may be the hero to his people, <laughs> mm -hmm. but here's what his executive order does not do. It does not reunite families with their children. Mm -hmm. It does not help children reunite with their parents or parents find their children. So it's not over. There's not. over 2,300 mm -hmm. kids who are without their parents tonight, mm -hmm. sleeping on the floor. And guess what? There's no help for them to be reunited with their parents mm -hmm. or their parents be reunited with them. Mm -hmm. We must remain angry. We must remain vigilant. We must remain American to stop this. It's horrible. It is. I, I, couldn't, say, I couldn't say it any better myself, Steve. Thank you for that. I don't enjoy the fact that now Donald Trump, by doing the right thing, he's the hero. He's the fantastic person. We'll give him his pat on the back. But we're forgetting about everybody that's not grandfathered in from here on out. I, I just can't fathom all of this because as a father, I don't know what I would do if my daughter was ripped mm -hmm. from my arms. And so it's very emotional. Thank everyone for the privilege that you don't have to. Yeah. Is Pima Community College praying for a Hail Mary for private donors to pony up enough money to resurrect its football program? Pima decided to follow Maricopa Community College District and cut its football program after this upcoming season. Pima claims it'll save half a million dollars per year. The college is facing five million in budget cuts over the next three years. This is just ridiculous. It's kind of pathetic, you know, <laughs> that they would drop football. One way to put it. You know, and it shows a systemic uh, problem within the college of not being able to manage its finances. Mm -hmm. When you have 80,000 students that attend college, find a way to keep the football program. You know, you can get creative with this. Mm -hmm. Yes, drop tennis, drop golf, and 
keep football, which is your biggest sport that allows the college to at least make some money or at least promote the, the college for free with a successful football program, just like the universities do. But here's the deal. How about just charging the players a $100 fee or something to help subsidize it, cut corners wherever they can, and you know what? Get some private donors. There are enough private donors out there that can help. Mm -hmm. Will it save the football program? I believe it can. How long? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And the audacity of administration to claim that this is a good thing, we're saving money, we're doing what we have to, how could they let it get to this point? How could they spend so many years making so many terrible decisions to where this is the last resort, this is our only chance to focus on education, our only chance to do what counts, that they have to cut the football program, their biggest money maker. I know the kids aren't taking that as an answer, I'm not taking it as an answer because it looks like they're trying to protect their salaries. It looks like they're trying to protect their fancy cars, their giant homes in Scottsdale, they're trying to protect that. Lost hopes, lost dreams, lost a, 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 of an opportunity for an education mm -hmm. is worth more than a measly half a million dollars. This college can do better than that, and they should have I done agree. better than that, period. All right, well, it's time now for Rapid Fire. I fire off local sports topics. Artie gives a rapid response. Here we go. A new NCAA rule will now allow football players who are out with a season-ending injury to take a redshirt year even after playing up to four games. Long overdue, long overdue. This is so beneficial to everyone. I don't know what took so long. The rule, this redshirt rule can't be so black and white. I'm proud of them for once. I agree with you on that. I think it allows these players to prolong their careers and not just lose a year when they loo lose out or get injured uh, in the first game of the season. Mm -hmm. So. The NCAA is expected to add three more football bowl games in the 2020 season, bringing the total number of postseason games to 43. Too many bowl games? No, I did. the more the merrier. That's the whole point of a bowl game is let's end our season on a win. Let's pro uh, promote this publicity. Let's advertise it. Let's recruit with it. So why not let everybody, why not let more people in on it? The greedy NCAA. That's what it says. <laughs> That's what it says. All right, Sean still. Miller and Arizona basketball hosted five-star shooting guard Josh Green for an unofficial visit last weekend. The 6'6 guard is listed as a 19th prospect in the class of 2019. Man, who gives a rat's <laughs> patootie about this? The problem isn't lack of talent. The problem is Sean Miller. Nobody cares about it. your recruits. We've seen it year after year. We see you. We saw you pull Aiton. We saw you pull Stanley Johnson, Derek Williams. Nobody cares. You're right there. <laughs> All right, Pac-12 is considering playing a 20-game basketball conference season to include two extra round robin games against top opponents. And I don't like this actually because what it does is it takes out the opportunity to schedule more out of conference games because you're playing in conference. It's, it takes an opportunity to get those marquee matchups, those clash of the titans that happen from conference to conference. I love playing within conference, the top dogs, and mm -hmm. no one gets to duck each other. That's what I like. <laughs> Arizona baseball coach Jay Johnson failed to make the NCAA tournament but just received a contract extension through 2023 and a $10,000 pay raise per year added to his half million dollar salary. Apparently he's a man with a plan. He sold it to administration and for some reason we're not in on it, us as the fans. Players may be in on it and he needs to tell us what that plan is. On paper it doesn't look so good for him. Six players were drafted and he did not make the NCAA That's tournament. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. Well, in the aftermath of the Golden State Warriors NBA final sweep of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Coach Steve Kerr said Tiger Woods' text message was one of the coolest things that he experienced after winning the final. Man, let him enjoy it. Let him have a good time. Don't but give him Tiger Woods. Don't give him smack about nothing, man. Let him enjoy it. John Gruden once got excited because he shook Larry Zonka's hand. Let these guys be fans of the game. Too. It was a text, so good <laughs> for Steve Kerr getting a text from Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Is Tucson? Really, one of the worst cities to live in when it comes to quality of life. Well, many Tucsonans love living in the old Pueblo, but a new study says that Tucson is one of the worst cities in the country when it comes to quality of life. And my take on this, Steve, is there's 
too much focus on jobs, there's too much focus on careers. It's a very personal take on everything, but that can't be where your quality of life comes from. There's the city of Tucson, there's so much under education, there's so much underqualified employees that police officers, paralegals, they're forced to take they're forced to take terrible wages and they got nothing to do with themselves. There's no money to go around the city. We shouldn't be surprised that something like this comes out. I agree with you. I love my city. I like drink the Kool-Aid. Yo soy Tucson. That's what I like to say. I am Tucson. I, I never but, noticed. But here's the deal. 24-7 Wall Street measures cities on eight criteria. Here's how Tucson made the list. Crime mm -hmm. is one. We're near a record pace mm. of murders in this city right now. Mm -hmm. Economy, our wages suck, let's be honest, and no jobs, they're all call center jobs. Education, we're near the bottom. If it weren't for that tax increase, mm -hmm. we, we'd be in trouble. Uh, housing, no one can afford rent in Tucson. So in infrastructure, our roads suck. <laughs> so four or five of the eight criteria, we're horrible. Not so well, not so So good. guess what? We deserve to be on that list. Mm -hmm. If we want to be taken off that list, then our city leaders need to do something to fix the problems within this city. I Period. agree, Steve. Back to sports. Are the Phoenix Suns drafting DeAndre Ayton number one because he went to Arizona and they're in desperate need to sell tickets? Some radio sports talk gurus were suggesting that's the case. But does it even matter? Ayton is already acting as though he'll be the top pick in this year's NBA draft. And I love the fact that A in is being cocky, he's being a little bit arrogant, mm -hmm. and he's talking his way into that number one draft. Mm -hmm. That's he's he's been acting like it, but I think his agent got a hold of him and said, you know what? Talk your way into it. Mm -hmm. That's Convince the Phoenix Suns you are number one. And you know what? He didn't work out for any other team. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that guess what? He's being a little bit cocky and arrogant. And that's that's my bone to pick with this entire situation. <laughs> It's getting a little bit to his head. His head is just a few is inches bigger that? than when he was here in town. The, what's wrong with that is that that entire problem, the reason we have to call it a problem is because that came from a guy named, guess, guess who? Sean, Sean Miller. Miller. Okay. He was completely <laughs> overshadowed here in, here in the city of Tucson with, eight, or with Trier, with Alkins, with everybody. Sean Miller never let him have the light of day. And now he's kind of freaking out with all this publicity. ESPN's interviewing him. So he's on the cover of Slam magazine. He doesn't know what to do with himself. So what's going to happen when he's so used to being in the public eye? He gets drafted. He's on the stage. He's playing in Phoenix. And guys like Jackson, guys like Booker are overshadowing him because he's not going to get drafted into a leadership role. I agree with you and I disagree with you. But let me just point something out. Artie, he's 19 years old. 19. Uh, who, okay. who should have he, controlled that when they had the chance okay. to? I will agree with you on this, though. <laughs> Sean Miller kept him out of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. I will agree. He did not give him the opportunity to talk to the local media. We hardly heard from DeAndre Ayton. Mm -hmm. You know, we followed him on Twitter. We followed him on social media. But we never heard from him after the games mm -hmm. talking about uh, what he felt about what was going but on. We never saw now him out we're hearing about, about it. We never saw him downtown, we, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, they sheltered him. Mm -hmm. And you got a point there. But I have to say, you know what? Now he's got an opportunity to make good with everything that he's going to accomplish. And let's not forget about those Pumas that he's going to be wearing. Take a look at those Pumas right there, okay? He just signed a deal with Puma. Bringing Puma back after being out of the spotlight for how many years? How many decades? It looks like somebody that was your age to sign that shoe, Steve. <laughs> and you know what? I would wear those Pumas because those are throwback. But here's the omen I see about those Pumas. Aren't they saying like, hey, he's a Phoenix Sun already. Mm -hmm. Or Look he's at the a colors. popsicle. Orange and yellow. Phoenix Suns, baby. You know what? There's nothing wrong with Pumas. It's not. It's I'd not. rather wear Pumas uh -huh. with, uh, with, you know, throwback sweats. You know, and look like a rapper. You say and look like what some sweats. Of, yeah, sweatpants. You know what I mean? The old sweatpants. <laughs> what do you call them? Nothing. Well, we won't get into that. We, we'll be here till next year trying to explain this to you. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hi. Fair enough. All right. Let's jump right into. Do we care? As you know, we love to tackle community issues and not just sports, and ask ourselves, do we care? Well, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey is ramping up calls for Republican state lawmaker David Stringer of Prescott to resign. Springer was caught on audio tape making racist comments, including stating in part, 
immigrants represent a threat to the U.S. because there aren't enough, quote, white kids, end quote. Now, Do we care. To the average Anglo-Caucasian American citizen, it's okay to want to continue your, your community values, your cultural values. It's okay to want to live in a suburb and bring your neighbor a, a nice fresh piece of pie and drive your Ford Focus. It's not okay to be afraid of change. This statement came from fear. It came from fear of change, which is why it was bad for once. I agree with Doug Ducey. Am I surprised by that statement? No, because <laughs> I've always said, especially over the last several decades, Arizona is, if not the top racist state in the union, the second most racist state in the union. And I got to agree. You know what? We have a bunch of lawmakers mm -hmm. who are just like Stringer. The only difference, they haven't gotten caught on tape. That's the only difference. They're thinking it, uh -huh. but they're not saying it, and they haven't been recorded saying it. That's oh, the only goodness. difference. <laughs> well, Pima County Board of Supervisors shot down Administrator Chuck Huckleberry's half-cent sales tax proposal to fix the roads. The proposal needed unanimous approval. Republicans Ali Miller and Steve Christie cast the two no votes. Yay for the Republicans. Do we care? <laughs> Yeah, yay for the Republicans <sighs> because they voted against another tax hike mm -hmm. that was forcibly being shoved down our throats so that we could pay to fix the roads. The roads that they've neglected for years and years and years and need about a billion dollars worth of repair and now all of a sudden another tax hike? Is that as creative as they can get mm -hmm. with fixing our roads? Chuck Huckleberry, you know what? This guy is the highest paid administrator in the state. He gets e paid equivalent to running a county the size of LA. And that's the best this guy can do. Good, Republicans, bam, take him out back, keep punching at him because it's pathetic. Mm -hmm. and, well, I have to agree with you, Steve. Here we are again at another shot down proposal while our roads are still in shambles and it's gonna be another few months before one sees the light of day. For goodness sake, stop pointing fingers, stop swinging your trunks, get some work done. All right, well, we have one more Do We Care. We'll do it quickly. Arizona CEOs at 29 of the state's largest corporations on average earn about 80 times what their workers made last year, according to an analysis by the Arizona Republic of Financial Records. Quickly. This doesn't surprise me. Trickle down economics does not work. I've never been a fan of it. Something like this is pathetic. It's pitiful. Rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That's what that says. <laughs> All right, well, you've heard the phrase, oh, no, you didn't. Well, here at the 520, we're not afraid to tell it like it is with, oh, yes, we did. Take a look at these photos of young immigrant children. Let it sink in for a couple of moments. Ripping these innocent children from the arms of their parents? Is this the America we want? How could any mother or father not feel heart-wrenching pain for these suffering children? Do these children look like criminals? MS-13 gang members? Rapists? The worst of the worst? What happened to conservatism's family values, pro-life, Christian beliefs? Shame on you those who blame the children for crossing illegally. It's a sad day in America when we allow extreme politics to blind our hearts in the face of such tragedy. It is, is it because their skin color is brown? If not, prove me wrong. We are better than this. This should never happen in this country ever again, period. And uh, to continue on child separation, of course, you've heard it seen it, felt it, and ignored it. The immigrant children separated from their parents without knowing where they went, who's speaking to them, in the language they're speaking to them. And of course, here come the wave of ignorant and numb supporters like my favorite Laura Ingram who said, they're basically summer camps. Go send your kids there for the summer then, Laura. <laughs> I also enjoy. Well, their parents shouldn't have broken the law and this is an Obama admin bill actually, BS. 
Stop admitting you deem humans less of a person because of residency. Stop defending idiocracy. Stop pretending you're numb to children being herded around like cattle and scream that in a language they don't speak. I hate the us versus them mindset. It's toxic, it's a parasite, it's traumatizing children because their parents didn't want to get paid $2.80 an hour. So please, take a minute and reflect. Exclude politics, exclude loyalty to your president, and just have a little bit of a heart for once. I'm at a loss for words. I know we're out of time, but let me say this really quick. If we really want to solve illegal immigration, then we need to be comprehensive about it and let's be honest these people would not be coming here if there wasn't a magnet pulling them here we sh if we're going to go after them and pull children apart and away from their parents why don't we go after the big ceos and the big companies who are calling for smugglers to bring them cheap labor it would end if we started going after the big wigs who are hiring these people and you'll see a big change. Until then, it's not sincere. It's all BS. It's a facade. It's all Period. a facade. Donald Trump is our big giant hero. All right. <laughs> we'll let this go. Now, before we go, take a look at this. All right, all right. I dare you to caption our photo of the week. On the left is X Wildcat Mini Mike. On the right is Big Bad Bibby. What do you say? Catching that. Oh my goodness. He looks goodness like 50 face. Cent, man. <laughs> it, look, it looks like Hulk Hogan. ESPN said it best. Mike Bibby, the new Mike Bibby, all buff, looking like Vin Diesel, mm -hmm. ate the old Mike Bibby who played for Arizona and led Arizona to a national title in 1997, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but gosh, mm -hmm. what happened? He looks like. Dude, whoever called, whoever told him he was letting himself go, he really took it to heart, man. I, he's, I guess he's trying to be a big three baller this summer, right? Uh, maybe. maybe. Uh. Well, that does it for the, this episode of the 520. Our goal is to tell it like it is because it's all about giving voice to opinions, even if you don't agree. Be sure to follow the 520 on Facebook and on Twitter at the 520 Tucson. And if you have a topic you want us to cover, send us an email at the 520 at kvoa.com. I'm Steve Nunez. And I'm Marty Mata IV. Join us next week on the 520. Go Wildcats. Jeez.